We're going to head, send things over to Tom Fenstermaker with the American Athletic Conference as he has some questions waiting from the media. Tom? Thanks, Morgan, and uh, thanks, gentlemen, for joining us. We'll first go to Trace Trelko of Sons of UCF. Uh, for each of you guys, how would you describe the chemistry that's developing? A lot of new faces on this team. How are you guys learning to work together and play together? Um, I say we're very fresh. Um, you know, with a lot of new guys, we could just start fresh, start new. Um, just like build off of a new foundation, pretty much. Um, we had a really good team last year, but you know, I feel like we didn't we didn't bring any of that, um, you know, last year, you know, habits into this year. We could kind of kind of uh, stop those habits before they start hurting us um, in the long run. So I say we're just very fresh. Uh, I think the chemistry is pretty strong. I mean, it get better each and every day. Um, it started during the summer playing pickup with everyone, even though everyone wasn't here yet. Some guys had graduated from their previous universities, but each and every day continues to grow as we continue to make connecting plays with each other. So it's, it's, it's going to be exciting. All right, our next question will be from Jason Beatty of the Orlando Sentinel. For Darius, this is your sophomore season now. What type of jump do you want to take following your freshman year last year? Uh, I'm looking forward to taking big jumps, but it's not going to be easy. It comes with a lot of hard work starting in the off season, and I'm looking forward to leading these guys to winning a championship this year. So, our next question will be from John Tiedel of Hoops HD. Hi guys, a uh, question for both of you about Hurricane Ian. Um, there's not a lot of guys on the roster with Florida ties, but I believe uh, CJ is from Sanford. And Darius, your dad is on the staff as well. So I was curious, what impact did the hurricane have on you or your families? Um, you go first? Uh, to be honest, the hurricane, uh, it impacted my uh, parents. They, they lost power a little bit. But for the most part, everyone else on the team, they were, we were all in our dorms, safe, taken care of. So it wasn't an issue for the guys on the team or most of the coaching staff. Yeah, we got a um, pretty sturdy uh, um, dorm, you know, it's, it's built for that kind of stuff. And we was just made sure that the basketball team made sure that we had food, enough food, enough water. And, you know, for personal uses, I just had my video game. And, you know, it wasn't that long. It was just like a day or two maybe we was inside. After that, we was back to work. Our next question will be from Kyle Nash of the Black and Gold Banneret. Gentlemen, great to see you guys again. Hey, listen, practice is coming up, or excuse me, games are coming up pretty soon in just a few short weeks. You guys have been doing a lot of practicing. What has been kind of the message for this year in particular that comes from to Coach Dawkins as you guys prepare? Uh, I think the message this year is just defense. Like, in the previous teams, the previous winning teams that Coach Dawkins had, they were, like, number one defense in the country a few years ago. So we're just trying to build back to that defensive principles and be the best defensive team in the country. Yeah, with, with a lot of new guys and a lot of young new guys, um, he just really wants to harp on what it takes to win. And with defense being the main thing, right now our defensive play is, is, is what's going to take us there. That's what he's harping on the most. Our last question will be from Trace Trelko of Sons of UCF. Again, for each of you guys, who's a guy or two that stood out so far that uh, you know, UC is making an impact this coming season? Um, I would say it's, it's hard to pick out a few guys, but I will say uh, Taylor Hendricks, he's, he's special. That kid's going to, he has a bright future ahead of him. But I mean, every day you just see shocking plays from each and every player on the floor. So it's just, you never know what you're going to get out of someone. I mean, everyone comes in with the same mindset to work hard every day, to be the best defensive player in the gym and to play hard and get better. Yeah, we got a lot of guys um, that's new here, of course. So uh, it's our first time seeing their game. So it, it's 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 not surprising to see something new every day from everybody. Um, even our, our walk-ons come in ready to work, and they surprise us a lot too. So even from down our walk-ons to our, our star players, you know, everybody puts in that little, that, that extra effort, um, especially because we're all new here. So everybody wants to have a good first impression and, and um, just show what they could do. CJ and Darius, it's Mark Adams in the studio. Great to see you guys. I'm looking forward to see this new edition of UCF. Both of you mentioned chemistry and avoiding the same mistakes from a year ago. 
What were those mistakes from a year ago that kind of derailed you along the way? And then how are you rebuilding chemistry with your new teammates today? Um, I say discipline was something that we lacked last year overall. Um, you know, we had a lot of talented guys, but I, I think that we kind of relied on that uh, more so than being 10 minutes early to everything and or not missing any assignments and, you know, little things like that that, that could just show on the court. Um, so I feel like this year we just have a, a lot of new guys on board with what's, what it takes to win for real off the court, not so much of just relying on talent. Ooh, CJ, you're speaking our language. Uh, this is Brooke Weisbrot in the studio. Great to hear that answer. And I would love to hear you uh, and Darius describe each other's games. Yesterday we talked about it. I mean, it is spooky season, so I'll ask the same question. What makes each other's game scary? Uh, I would say C CJ's game is scary because he he's just an athlete and He's not only an athlete, but he's just he's developing each and every year. He's getting stronger. He's working on his jump shot, working on his ball handle. So I can't wait to see when CJ's playing five on five in games because CJ is special. He's he's just a special type of guy. He just brings a lot of energy on the team. He's all over the place on the court. So he's he's gonna be on the lookout for. And I think Darius, he uh he he plays to his strengths real well. Um, he's disciplined, and when he gets in the paint, he plays off two feet. I know last year he, he uh, didn't really do that as well. And um, I just feel like, uh, yeah, he has a good feel for the game, and, and just when he's on the court, he makes everybody else better just naturally. And um, get him to that next step, him just being a sophomore, I feel like it's just important that he continues to stay on the floor when he gets in the paint. Y'all see that a lot this year because I've been seeing that every day in practice, and that's pretty much what like you need out of point guard so that they don't really turn the ball over as much. He has a lot of less turnovers this year than last year for sure. So I can't wait for the for the season to start and see you know, him capitalize off of last year because last year he had a great season as a freshman. So you know he could only do nothing much but build off of that. We'll have a follow-up from Ke uh, Kyle Nash. Darius, I have to ask, uh, Coach and your peers last year said already as a freshman you were developing as a leader, and now you and CJ clearly are the leaders of this team. How was practice and preparation different with you an established presence uh, as one of the leaders of the team? Uh, I would say this year you just got to come up with the mindset and ready to get better every day. Uh, lead the guys, whether it's – always always positive even if you're having a bad day you still got to remember that it's not about you it's always about the whole team so as long as I'm upbeat and I'm positive towards my guys and I know I get the best out of them and be the most energetic Darius CJ thank you both so much for joining us looking forward to seeing the Knights tip off here in just a few weeks thank you thank you for having me I love what they said Focused on the little things, not relying on talent. If you're Johnny Dawkins listening to that, yeah. what's your reaction, Mark? My reaction is that a year ago, they, I work in the software business. And so one of the things that I learned in that business is there's always lessons learned. I mean, when you go through a, you're developing software, you go through a sprint and then you have the lessons learned. You learn what you did wrong, what you did well. And I think that that's what UCF collectively did a year ago. They looked in the mirror and said, what were the lessons learned? Where did we fall short? which is what you should do as a coach every time. And I think they had an honest look in the mirror. And C.J. Walker, I thought, really put it well when he talked about how we didn't have guys who were there early. Our problem was discipline. It wasn't talent. We had plenty of talent. And for a player to come out and say that and recognize that publicly, I, I thought A, was refreshing, mm -hmm. but also was telling as to how the entire team, not just Johnny Dawkins, the entire team looked themselves in the mirror and said, we got to get better, and here's how we do it. And here's how that sets up success for the rest of the team. When you know everybody's going to be early, on time, and ready for practice, yeah. when they're going to turn in their papers, when they're going to go to class, all of that energy spent getting the guys to do the right thing is no longer there. Now you can use that energy in practice. You can get excited about taking charges and rebounding and all those things that you would just groan and moan about because you're already expending so much energy somewhere else. Darius Johnson had 89 assists to 59 turnovers last year. CJ said he's going to have even less this year. I'm really looking forward to that combo. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to see some really good alley-oops from those two guys. <laughs> yeah, they are. With nine new players, I mean, to have leaders and, and to hear uh, those guys talk in the way they did, really, what's how, how can that really be a turning point for this team to take the next step? The, the key to winning is that when you're the head coach, you're the least important guy in the locker room. 
that is internally driven. You were a point guard, great player at two Coastal guard. Carolina. You played two guard. I thought you, you might played have the point. Come on. Oh. Point. So you had to give and go, give it to me and go to you know where because right. I'm going to shoot it. I'm sorry. Yes. But you broadcast like a point guard. Let's yes, put it that yeah, way. Okay? Let's, let's go that way. You know, but but the internal driven leadership of this team, that's what I like about it. And apparently that's what was lacking a year ago that seems to have grown roots this year, which is exciting for Coach Dawkins and for the Knights of UCF. We welcome in Coach Dawkins right now into this studio. Coach, great to be joined by you. Thanks so much for the time. We're going to go ahead and send things over to Tom Fenstermaker with the American, who's going to field some questions from our media. Sure. Thanks. Thanks, Morgan. And uh, Coach, thanks for joining us. Uh, we'll take our first question from Jason Beatty of the Orlando Sentinel. Johnny, it's great to talk with you again. Season around the corner, obviously, you guys were voted six in the preseason poll by the coaches. What are your expectations for this season? What do you want to accomplish this year? Uh, we want to have a great season, uh, and, and, and that means a different thing for each team. And for this group right here, you know, I'm excited about what I've seen this, this summer, especially this fall. You know, I think we can do some special things. You know, it's going to require us to stay together, keep working hard, but, you know, I expect, expect us to have a terrific year. Our next question will be from Trace Traco of Sons of UCF. Uh, Coach, good to see you. A lot of new faces on this team. How are those new guys adjusting to the Johnny Dawkins way of defense first? <laughs> They're definitely adjusting. Uh, you know, the thing we've had is a lot of our guys came late because they were finishing up school. So they didn't get in until the end of August. So for those guys, there's still some adjusting, you know, learning the habits that we want them to have out of our system. But the one thing I will say, everyone's working hard, everyone's bought in, and that makes things easier because everyone's coming in with an open mind to learn and get better. So excited about, you know, what I've seen so far, and, uh, and they understand the importance of Plan D in order to be successful. Our next question will be from Kyle Nash of the Black and Gold Banneret. Good to see you again, Coach. Um, so my main question is, C.J. Walker earlier talked about discipline is something that you guys felt, uh, needed to work on going into this season uh, with practices and, and as you prepare for the upcoming opener here. What have you done to kind of instill more of that in practice? Is there anything special you've done there for that? Well, typically for us, you know, we, you know, we, we want to stay focused on the task at hand, and that's, that's being as, uh, as good a basketball team as we can be, and that's going to require discipline. And so what we want our guys to do is to understand the importance of being focused uh, and, and just holding guys accountable, holding everyone accountable to the standards that we have in our program. We have very, very high standards here at UCF, and we want to make sure we hold our student athletes, you know, to those standards. And, and they've embraced that. As I said, we've gotten, you know, you know watching our players, it's been fun seeing just the buy-in that they've given us in, in, in our culture, because it, it may be different in another culture. And, and I think that everyone is kind of bought into what we want. Our next question will be from John Tiedel of Hoops HG. Good afternoon, Coach. Uh, two of the transfers you brought in include Horton and Kelly, who are the exact same height and weight. So does one of them seem to have an edge in terms of who can make an immediate impact? And if not, do you see a chance that you might play them both at the same time? Well, playing them both at the same time is a strong possibility. Uh, they both, you know, experienced players. They both have uh, you know, played in some, some big time games and big time environments. So they, we know they're capable of playing together. At that size, at 6'4", 6'5", both of those guys can play on the perimeter easily for us at, in college basketball in today's game. So that won't be an issue for us. Uh, but they've been great. They've been competing, working hard. But the thing that they've bought is, is some, some maturity and some leadership you know, from the standpoint of what they've gone through. And I think that's, that's really helped our team grow as well. We'll go to, back to uh, Jason B. Coach, what expectations do you have for Darius Johnson in his second year? What type of jump are you hoping to see from him? Uh, I, I think he's going to make a, a huge jump for us. Last year, he started about half the season and got some really good experience. I think this year he's built off of that. He had a terrific summer, worked really hard. And I think you're going to see a player that's a, a much improved player from what he did last year. And he was an all-league player last year. So I just see, you know, his best basketball still ahead of him. And uh, like I said, with the work ethic that he has, he'll only continue to get better. And I think he'll have a really good sophomore season for us. All right, let's go back to Trace Choco. Uh, Coach, what do you want to see from C.J. Walker, not only as a player, but as a leader on your team? Is this what you said, Trace? Leadership first. I mean, he, he's a terrific player. We know what he brings 
you know, the intangibles that he brings to a game. But the thing we need most is, is his leadership. He is one of our older players, and he's provided that. He's been a terrific leader all summer. Uh, he's been leading this fall, and that's what you want to see from a, from a senior. And he's a true senior this year. So uh, even though he has an extra year to go, uh, this is his fourth year of college basketball. So we expect him to take that step in leadership, and he has. He's embraced it, and the players have followed, which is really good. We'll go to Kyle Nash. Coach, uh, this being, you know, the final year in the American and, you know, obviously you're focused on this season and competing in a tough conference. Uh, are there any parts or any steps uh, through the uh, offseason or through the year that you're going to use to kind of jump into the Big 12? Uh, you know, all of, all of our focus has been in the American Conference this year. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a big believer in staying in the moment. And, uh, you know, we're here. The moment is, is now. Uh, the American is a great conference. You know, I've loved being in. This is my seventh season. And uh, I want to make sure that, you know, we, we play uh, the best basketball we can play in the American Conference. And that's all I'm concentrating on. Uh, I think what happens down the road after this year is over, we'll, we'll transition. And, and that's a great opportunity to transition to another terrific conference. But right now, you know, it's all about the American. It's all about staying in the moment. And that's what we're talking to our players about as well. And our final Zoom question for Coach will be from Trace Troco. Uh, Coach, what's something that happened in the previous season that you were able to use as a learning moment, a teachable moment with this group of players this season? Uh, that's a great question. I, I think my first season, uh, my first season with everything was new. I was new. All the players were new to me and, and some transferring and coming in. And that's very, it feels very similar to that year, you know, with the guys that we have here. And so I've drawn upon that kind of how our approach was with that group. And I think it's been good for these guys. I mean, just the way we've attacked things, you know, on the court, off the court, the way we've, you know, handled, you know, holding guys accountable for the things that we want to get done in our system, you know, how we want to play defensively first. And I think our guys have really bought into that because they understand the importance of winning. And if you think about it, through all of my life and all of my experiences, you know, every team I've been a part of that was a great team was a great defensive team that had talent. And this team right here has the potential to be a great defensive team, and they're talented. And so that's kind of, you know, what we've been preaching, you know, throughout the, the, this, the summer as well as this early fall. Coach Dawkins, it's Mark Adams. Great to see you. And I'd like to dig a little deeper on the building of this roster. And I want to go back to your NBA career where you played for multiple teams. Rosters changed, you changed cities, all that change that you had to manage as a player and even during your coaching career, how has that experience as an NBA player and dealing with change throughout your playing career prepared you to build this roster and work through the change that you're going through this year? Well, I think it helped me immensely. Uh, it helped me because the thing you learn in those situations is patience. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't happen overnight. You have to be patient. There are a lot of moving parts guys are at different stages of learning what you want in your system and you have to you know be willing to bring them along with 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 a patience you know mindset from the standpoint of one player may pick it up in week one another player may take two or three weeks to pick it up but you have to be willing to understand that and and work him through it and not get frustrated and that you know put him in a position where he can't be successful because of your frustration so just the patience you learn from being you know with those different teams and different coaches and with a lot of you know roster turnover I've had in the NBA and I've tried to apply that same thing with our players here at UCF. Hey, Coach, Brooke Weisbrot in the studio. It, it seems uh, that you applied a lot of that patience with your squad last year, and certainly Darius Johnson uh, produced for you. You know, looking at his numbers, 89 assists to 59 turnovers. I also thought he brought some great leadership to your team, you know, for, especially for a young guy. Do you think this could be his breakout year, or, or what are you seeing from him that you're most excited about? Uh, you know, the thing I love the most about, about Darius Johnson is, is his competitiveness. I mean, he's, he's a refuse to lose type of player. And, and when you have a guy like that at the point guard spot, you know, it, it kind of makes you happy because you know he's going to be an extension of what I want out there on the court. He's going to be tough. He's going to compete on every single possession, whether it's defensively or offensively. And he's going to, you know, also with his teammates, he's going to make sure everyone is competing at the same level he's competing at. He's not going to settle for anything less than everybody giving max effort on the court. And so, yeah, I think he's going to have a breakout year this year. I think his summer was terrific as well as I thought the experience he gained last year. So I'm excited about, you know, what I think he can become, you know, going into year two. 
Coach Dawkins, thank you so much for the time and for joining us today. Looking forward to seeing your new team really here this season. Hey, thanks a lot. I really appreciate you guys. Take care.